Thank you for joining us this evening. You're watching Squawk. I'm Bruce Whitfield on CNBC Africa, first in business worldwide. In the next half hour, we dig into the latest financial stories, market stories as well. And joining me at the hot desk, we've got David Shapiro from Sassman and Havran Smith from New Economy. Welcome to both of you. How's the week been for you, David Shapiro? Good. Bullish. For the wrong reasons, a rand's falling in a heap, but uh, I don't care, it makes my portfolio look very good. But, okay, and that's important because you've got a nice rand hedge portfolio, that's all well and good, but for South Africa PTY Limited, a nine rand to the dollar rand is uncomfortable, surely. It brings in all kinds of problems. It yeah. just means that I think uh, most of the goods that we consume on a day-to-day -day basis are imported. Mm -hmm. You know, we're actually quite an open economy, so I think it's going to, I, I was just reading, you know, your inflation number at 5.7, I think we might have to revisit that. Um, I well, think it's going to cause a lot of problems. And also, uh, a lot of imported goods, some heavy goods, are going to cost more. Mm. Uh, we're doing a lot in the infrastructure side, South Africa, that's going to cost more. So we've got inflation of 5.7%, a rand blowing out at 9 to the dollar. Um, and we've got an inflation problem looming, surely, even though there's a reweighting of the inflation basket, which is going to be marginally positive happening next month. How do you see it? Yeah, look, I think that's probably the lowest number you're going to see for quite some time on the inflation. It came out this week at, I think, 5.7. Certainly upwards pressure, and you're probably going to see the Reserve Bank not doing much uh, towards interest rates going for the, next, for the next year or year and a half. That's most economists' views out there as well. Dare I propose that they start raising rates to draw some of the hot, ca hot money into the country to get this rand under control to solve a future inflation problem? They can't, because what's going to drive the economy? I think we're still going to rely on the consumer to drive the mm. economy and the only way that the consumer can uh, survive is with low interest rates. But has the consumer got any gunpowder left? I mean, the consumer has been driving this economy for the last five years. We've seen the retail shares, and you keep whinging about uh, complaining, I mean, analyzing <laughs> uh, how expensive they are, and consumers keep riding this particular, the, keep riding the, the, the pony. You know, Bruce, if we, if we actually looked at the results that have come through, whether it's been from clicks, MassMart, whoever, to it, they, they're actually pretty good. What we're whinging about is that the foreigners came and pushed the share prices a little too high for us. But if you look at the underlying results, they're pretty good. People are still spending quite a lot out there. So um, analyzing that, I think it's going to continue. I think uh, the level of um, social grants is still very high. Are we paying for it? Yep. Taxpayers are paying for it. Uh, wages are still up. I think on a real basis, that's after a, uh, after inflation, they're still making more money than they did last year. They got more money to spend. So I think it'll be pretty in a stable. I don't think it's going to fall in a heap, and I think that's still going to drive the economy. Now Cameron, do you buy that argument uh, in terms of the South African consumer continues in an environment where jobs are under pressure, where there is going to be some downward pressure, surely at least in the corporate sector, uh, on wage demand, simply because companies can't afford to carry huge numbers of staff in tough environments? Yeah, look, I think that's one of your concerns out there for this year is probably the consumer. I mean, the unsecured lending game can't continue like it did in the previous few years. I think even Leon Kikinis has admitted this week that the yeah. party, yes. is, I mean, they're not, they're not sort of taking the balloons and the party hats down just yet, yeah. but the, the main thrust of the party is pretty much over. So that's certainly a big concern because we know manufacturing is declining uh, and struggling over the last year or two. We know mining is struggling over the last year or two, about various factors on that side. But certainly I think the consumer drove our market over the last two years. Will they continue to drive it? We are a bit wary on that front, but probably another year or two might might work out. But I hope they do not cut interest rates further because then you're going to have danger signs on, on some of the consumer and unsecured lending. I think they, that's a danger that we to. need to avoid. I think we might have to see it later on because manufacturing is not going anywhere, yeah. mining is not going anywhere. So you've got to give it a bit of a boost. And that's why I say when I say consumers will hold the economy, remember we're not growing at 5 or 6%. We're growing at two and a half, maybe two and three quarter percent. So it's 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 not great growth, and it's not the kind of growth sufficient enough to create jobs in this economy or to give it massive momentum. We're just going to bumble through. I, I was chairing a panel discussion mm. this week where Stephen Friedman, the political mm. analyst, was talking. Mm. He was reflecting on what Peter Bruce had been writing in his thick yeah. end of the wedge column on Monday. Mm. Peter Bruce on holiday, in sort of wild coast sort of part of the world, just looking at the transformation of rural villages and looking at the booming businesses in small towns which and small towns got yeah. running sewage in the streets that the infrastructure story there is a disaster but cash build is doing well yeah. mass marts build, uh, builders yeah. warehouse and those sort of businesses in small towns those are the booming businesses courtesy thank you very much of amongst other things social so grants. grants exactly or well, who's who's capturing most of it as well as ShopRite. yeah you know because uh, ShopRite's got the distribution so you go there and you get your cash and 
they give you all kinds of deals and you go buy your milli mill or whatever you have to. So it's, it is happening. He said that they're transforming those mud huts yeah. into concrete uh, yeah. uh, uh, establishments and that. So there is, there's a massive, there is a massive informal co economy there. I'm not sure that we're actually able to capture it. You should be able to do it in VAT receipts and you, know, you, you can get an idea mm. of what's being spent. No, it's but a fast, I think this, breakthrough, yeah. you know, the consumer is still ruling at the moment. Okay, let's go to the other side of the market, the luxury goods market. You're mm. a fan of, of Richemont Chevron? Yeah, certainly. I think it's one of the better priced. In the beginning of the year, they had a huge run. It's yes. about 50% up in the last six months. But certainly, I think it, they, they, they're in the right area. Uh, it's the upper end of the market. We know they're not as cyclical as some of the rest of the market is. And certainly they got the right exposure out there and it's 100% rand each as well almost. So yeah. I think if you take the mm. cash out of the balance sheet as well, they're trading probably at a 15, 16 P at the moment. Okay. Uh, and, and that's certainly the cheaper one in the retail space in South Africa and you get some offshore exposure. Well, when, when, you, when you look at Richemont though, and, it, and often you can gauge by management's optimism or yeah. management's lack of optimism, yeah. but Johan Rupert is always gloomy about <laughs> prospects <laughs> for Richemont, <laughs> which makes that particular <laughs> trick. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and he's been fabulously wrong on Richemont's mm. prospects for the last Four six years. reporting <laughs> periods <laughs> and the share price has gone from strength mm. to strength, which, you know, it's wonderful to underestimate yourself, but mm. boy, it doesn't give anybody any great guidance. Any, I, any never idea understand of why. I never understand why he's always so pessimistic. I think he, he, he reads the newspapers too much. I think he, read, <laughs> yeah, he reads he the headlines. Too hard, yeah, yeah, he thinks too hard and he <laughs> reads the headlines and he says, you know, I should, we're doing well, but I should be worrying. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and the chaps who are selling the watches couldn't give a damn. You know, they go, you go. And I always make this example. I always, you know, you know, I travel quite a lot to see children then, and I'm always in the duty free lounge, not lounges, what do you call them, the shopping Shops, center. Yeah. There. And I see these watches, 100,000 Rand, you know, with, uh, who buys them? And people do. Somebody is. Someone's buying yeah. them, and that's their market. We don't understand it. And I, mm. I, I made this comment many, many times before. I say the best way to participate, you know, at least we can afford the shares. We can't afford the watches, but we can afford the shares. So that's a way to participate. But it's a massive market and I and, and it's a it's, it's a rich market and I think that as we see the aspirant Chinese Indians and various other emerging markets Russians etc they love watches I d I'm not a watch man mm. but you know when you that's meet that's watch why you're always late <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but you know Bruce when you meet watch people they love watches oh, yes, and they've got it. four five six so it's, it's that market. It's an incredible market. I, I love the, the, the big <laughs> investment lesson that we've got ourselves today, Robert, and that is, you know, don't think too hard about investments. <laughs> I, mean, I think that is, uh, that's the big one, isn't it? Don't think too hard about investments. Yeah, well, can, you know, on that subject, Warren Buffett always says, you know, he always says, it's one of his famous quotes, he says, you don't need um, 150 IQ to be a good stock picker. All you need is 120. Sell the 30 points. Yes. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> but in your, your experience, Deb, I mean, are you one of these guys who sits agonizing over a spreadsheet when you, when you make investment decisions? Or do you take, dare I say, four decades of investment mm. experience and apply that um, more selectively than perhaps a 13-year-old who's got a, a PhD in, in quantum I th physics? I think experience teaches you to know which are good companies. You know, you learn which managers to trust, you know, yeah. and you look for sustainable earnings. I like compounders, you know, every year they're adding to the earnings, sometimes three, sometimes six, sometimes 12 and so on. Always paying a good dividend, good product like Richemont. Mm -hmm. So you learn to trust those companies, you know, and you just keep away from the dodgy ones, you know, those, <laughs> you know the new ones. Especially look at Apple at the moment. You know, oh, yeah. We can discuss Apple. You well, know, there okay. you are. Apple, I mean, uh, Apple, I, I, I chatted to, to um, one of the founders of Apple with, uh, with Steve Jobs last year, of course, Steve uh, Wozniak, um, okay. in the middle of last year. And I said, where's Apple going wrong? And he says, well, they're not doing anything new anymore. And, and his real concern was that they had, had ridden this Apple pony for as long as they possibly could, and now suddenly they were running out of innovation yeah. and ideas without Steve Jobs there. And that, I suppose, is the biggest risk for any company, that you are the world's biggest genius until you're not anymore. No, look, it's, it's an interesting story. I think everybody wanted to pile in at $700 a share uh, about a year back, and we thought it's a bit rich, uh, too much... Uh, hype around the story. Uh, there is some new innovation coming in later this, this year with I think two or three new phones being launched and then also Apple TV but, but coming but out. Yeah, but it's not, not, it's, it's not, it's not revolutionary. Not, yeah. No. 
It's not revolutionary. They're number five in China. Yeah. yeah. And you know what it is? It's price. Yeah. They're now trying to get into China and make yeah. a cheaper phone or to try and penetrate that Precisely market. what they're trying to do. So you're saying, and you know, I think the big worry with tech, again, quoting Buffett, he always says his biggest, th one of the reasons that he doesn't go into it is that he doesn't know who's in the garage yeah. now coming up with something new. And I think that's it. And, and the kids are so fickle. Oh, yeah. You know, they'll switch, boy. One new phone, something comes out, Apple's yeah, yeah. gone. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think so the Samsung story is probably a bit so, so rosier. Yeah. 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 They do the manufacturing as well. They even manufacture some, a lot of the parts that go into some of the Apple phones. Yeah. And I think from that side, you're probably looking at some, mm. I think they're leaders in 14 different market segments in, in the world in, in electronics. Yeah. And I but think that's probably yeah. a safer bet. Apple, wonderful product. Unlike Richemont, you see, you don't, you don't want to buy the yeah, product, you want to buy the shares. Apple, you buy the product, not the shares. You know, Philip Patek, what's that? What's Philippe you know? Patek. Philippe, Philippe, Philippe Patek, what's Get that? Right. Beautiful advert. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're just keeping the watch for the next generation. That product's just going to last. Yeah, like, you know that's so you want those kind of companies. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a product flaw though because then you're not really selling new watches all the time. You want the Swatch model <laughs> where it's trendy <laughs> and functional, and you throw it away after six <laughs> months or put it in a drawer and buy a new <laughs> one. But like Crocs, the quality's too good, <laughs> um, and that's why they're struggled. I think because they last too good and long. You don't have a repeat cycle. <laughs> SAB Miller, um, mm. one of South Africa's greatest companies, probably the biggest company listed on the JSE. Phenomenal trading updates coming through, and the share price keeps going up and up. How mm. far does it go? Yeah, look, I think we'll, we'll have to wait for the earnings itself to come out. Um, it is trading at a premium against Heineken, et cetera, but I think it's probably for a reason as well trading at a premium. Mm -hmm. The currency is not into that PE yet. Uh, and then, of course, the, the growth that they got in Africa left, I think is probably one of the, the, the main uh, attractions for SAB. Mm -hmm. uh, China was a bit disappointing, but I think we saw that in Richmond sales yeah. as well. But there's some reasons for that, and I think we need but to give that two, to that, we've two seen or three really quarters. Good data coming out. Yes. Yes. He's thinking too much. He is thinking too much. <laughs> <isn't> <laughs> too much. Please, it's beer. <laughs> we'll stop. People are going to keep drinking beer. When people stop drinking beer, then we'll start to sell SAB. Yes. I mean, as and long that, as they manage it. And that will sure. be the end of the world. No, no. That will be the end of the world. Oh. And I think they get their premium brands through as well. Um, so Lovely they company. they got their strategy right, uh, and you're paying a premium for it. But it's some, something you probably need in your portfolio. Mm -hmm. Mark Kirifani. Mm -hmm. um, has he got the Anglo blood in his veins already? <laughs> Talking about South Africa 2013 can be the world's greatest uh, resource producer. Now, is he playing politics or is he talking sense? I think Cynthia Carroll actually tied him to a chair <laughs> <laughs> and started to say, this is what you... Because it sounds exactly like Cynthia Carroll when she first took over the job, you know. And I also... Don't you have to be something of an optimistic politician to take on a job like Anglo-American? Otherwise, you're going to do your head in, David. Uh, you start thinking too much, ultimately. Uh, I, I, I think so. I, I, I would have preferred him uh, to say, listen, this is what we've got to get through. You know, these are the issues that we have to address. The trouble is that we could be the world. We were the world's resource capital in the 19th century, long before Kerr was even there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was there, but not. He came a long time later. But but when you know when I was first started in the market in the 70s and that right through to the 80s, we were the resource capital in the world. If you wanted to buy. Uh, a mining share, you didn't think, you didn't go to Australia. They dug little holes in the ground. They had these penny gold mines and, and so on. And we lost that. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, hopefully he's trying to capture it back, but it needs huge work. It needs government, labor, and you know, business to sit around with. I, I think he's a smart operator. And mm -hmm. I've, I've spoken to him a number of times, I don't know if, what your assessment is of Mark Edifani, but I think Anglo American is probably lucky to have yeah. him at this point in the cycle. Yeah, certainly. I think he's, he's the right guy for the job. Um, and hopefully he can play a bit of political games because we it. certainly do need political games going forward. They are mm -hmm. starring a lot of retrenchments um, ahead going forward for this year, especially in the platinum sector. And I suspect there will be coming problems in a year or two's time in some of the iron ore projects as well. Yeah, ultimately. I mean, the, everything is cyclical. It's all everything you know, gets, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not so easy. We go through a not so easy phase. At the moment. Yeah. The prices oh. are ticking up. Mm. But prices. B BHP <laughs> Billiton, you look at where Anglo is, look at BHP mm. Billiton, it's everybody's favourite stock pick in the resources mm. sector. Iron ore prices, uh, what about what about BHP Billiton's future? It had an update yesterday as well. Well, they said 10% for mm. the next foreseeable, you know, for the next number of years. Nice. That's going to be production. So demand's still there. Mm. There might be more supply coming on. But I think the one thing about South African suppliers like Kumba, they've got that tied up. So even if there is competition, it might affect the price, but they'll still, they'll still ship the stuff and still ship it at very good margin, and they're increasing production. Mm. So 
Um, you know, if you look at if you look at Kumba Iron Ore, it's, it's a, a company with wide margins and it pays out a lot to you in dividends. Why sell it? You know, why yeah. sell it at six, seven percent dividend yield? You don't have to be that clever. So yeah, you know, the price will go up and down and that. But to me, it's uh, it's, it's all it's about the dividends. And I, it, number one. But now, Number one. dividends do fall yeah. away, but they they do <laughs> they do in time. But yeah. uh, while the dividend flows are good, you've yeah. got to ride the cycle. Yeah. But you can't be anticipating two or three years ahead that dividend flows might dry up. No, no. But you try to avoid some of that. And if you look at if you look at Kuma or the iron ore story at the moment, you will see that the last six months, uh, I think they brought out their trading statement mm -hmm. the other day, was actually down about forty percent on their earnings. If you go forty percent down on your earnings, you're certainly not going to be able to to still pay out a six or seven or eight percent dividend yield. But that's going to ho hopefully not disappear in total. But they got a huge margin, as David said. I think they got a forty-seven percent profit margin. Uh, which is also not sustainable in that specific business. But they do got the quality of iron ore, mm. so they always sell it. But I think they had normalized earnings records, and I don't think it's going to last forever.